Hello and welcome to CMC Markets on Tuesday the 30th of June and the weekly market update. Now last week I looked at the Eurostox 50 in the context of the downtrend that it had been in since the end of April and we broke to the top side and we can see that we broke to the top side on this daily chart that I've got in front of me. And I raised the question, you know, were we coming to the end of the downtrend that we've been in since the highs that we saw in April? And I talked about Dow theory, and for me Dow theory is very important, and I hate to labour the point, but whenever you're trading a particular asset, I think it's always very, very important that for any trading idea, you get confirmation of a breakout, you get confirmation of a decision when you start to put money on the table with respect to a move up or down. And I looked at the DAX, which I like to look at in conjunction with the Eurostox 50 to, to really determine whether or not the, the, the breakout that we saw in the Eurostox 50 was a valid one. And when I looked at the DAX chart, we hadn't broken out from the downtrend that we'd been in since the peaks that we saw earlier this year. And that made me doubt the veracity of the breakout in the Eurostox 50. And it was right of me to be cautious about that because as we can see from this DAX chart, we actually came all the way back down to the previous lows that we saw in June, in mid-June. And we've done exactly the same thing on the Eurostox 50. So if you look at the Eurostox 50 now, I'm going to put the daily chart up for that again. And I'll let you digest that. And I'll, look at, and I'll ask you to look at the 200-day moving average, as well as the twin lows at 3,370. And we can see straight away that's a very, very key support level. Let's look at the DAX. A DAX again, we're coming close to the 200-day moving average. We're also very close to a key support level at 10,790. So we know from both of these charts here on the indices that we're approaching a very key support level for both. So if we're going to see further declines in the DAX and in the Eurostox 50, we need to see a confirmation of a break lower on both. Not just one, both because the risk of a false break is very high if one goes through and the other one doesn't. And that was borne out on the break higher that we saw on the Eurostox 50 that wasn't confirmed on the DAX. So I think it's very important that when you're looking to trade equity indices, you need to find, if possible, confirmation. And the DAX and the Eurostox 50 generally tend to be a good mirror of each other. They tend to work fairly well. Um, doesn't always have to be that. It can be the Dow Jones Industrial Average and the Dow Jones Transportations. That's the, ori that's the origination of Dow theory. But overall, find a pair of currency, find a currency pair that will help confirm a buy or a sell signal. On that theme of confirmation, I'm going to take it a step further and we're going to use currencies because we've had a massive move not only in equity markets over the course of the last few days, namely because of what's been going on in Greece, but also we've got some very key data coming up later this week, namely US non-farm payrolls on Thursday, and we'll be hosting a webinar for that on Thursday at 1.15, so sign up for that. There'll be a link at the top of the screen for you to click on, register. Colin and I will basically talk you through the numbers on Thursday at 1.15 and we're expecting around about 225,000 so it's going to be a very very key week for the US dollar and in that context I'm going to look at the euro dollar. The moves that we saw on euro dollar over the weekend, the massive drop to 109.60, the subsequent rebound on the back of um, on, the, on the back of the Greece news that the potential that the likelihood is we could get some form of agreement. Who knows what type of agreement we're going to get. Ultimately, we need, to trace the we need to trade the price action. And in that context, that's why when I look at euro dollar, I also look at the dollar index. For quite some time now, I've expressed some skepticism about the fact that the euro dollar can go any lower. Now obviously the weekend Greek news was not particularly great news for any euro dollar longs. We went through the support 110.50, we bottomed out at 109.50.60 but we came back like an express train. And if we look at the chart that we've got in front of you right now we can see that we broke the downtrend, we broke the uptrend line rather from the April lows um, around about 105.20 and that trend line support came in just below around about 110.20 but we were unable to sustain the move 
lower. And this is where, again, confirmation is very, very important because while we broke the uptrend line on the euro dollar, so now when we look at the Bloomberg chart and look at the similar price action on the dollar index, we can draw the same trend line or a very similar trend line, only this time through the highs, through the April highs, and we can actually see that through the April highs on the dollar index, that trend line didn't break. So on the euro dollar, the, down, the, the uptrend line, the line from the lows, was broken, but on the dollar index, it wasn't. And in the context of euro dollar, that is important because euro dollar, 55% of the dollar index is comprised of euro dollar. So if you're looking for a breakout on euro dollar, you want to see a, a similar breakout on the dollar index. So what does that mean going forward for euro dollar? Well, ultimately, with non-farm payrolls coming up, 110.50 is once again going to be a key support level on euro dollar. But also, keep an eye on that downtrend line on the dollar index in the event of a very good US number. That trend line on the dollar index needs to break above, the price needs to break above the trend line. You need to see a subsequent break below the euro dollar trend line to suggest that we're going to get further US dollar strength. So that concludes this week's weekly market update. The last one in June, the last one in the second quarter of 2015. Doesn't time fly when you're having fun? Um, so until Thursday, where Colin and I will be hosting an on-farm payrolls webinar, and until Q3 next week, this is Michael Hewson talking to you from CMC Markets.